Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to solve one-step equations. We'll start with equations involving addition and subtraction, move on to multiplication and division, and then we'll end with some practice problems that you can try on your own. Now, when we solve one-step equations, we want to look to isolate the variable, which just means to get the variable by itself. We do that by using inverse operations, and we can think of an inverse operation as the opposite operation. Basically, we use an inverse operation to undo another operation, and this will isolate the variable when we solve equations. And always remember, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other side of the equation. This keeps everything balanced and equivalent. Let's jump into our addition and subtraction examples, starting with number one, where we have x minus nine equals 28. So we need to solve this equation. We need to figure out what x equals. So what minus nine equals 28? Now for this example, we may be able to figure it out using mental math, but it's going to be helpful to go through the process of isolating the variable. That way, we're prepared for more difficult or more complex equations. Now we are subtracting nine from x. We need to undo that subtraction, so to speak, by using the inverse operation. What's the inverse or opposite of subtraction? Well, addition. So we need to add nine to the left side of the equation. Now remember, whatever we do to one side of an equation, we must do to the other in order to keep everything balanced and equivalent. So we need to add nine to the right side as well. Now looking at the left side of the equation, we are subtracting nine and adding nine. So these nines cancel each other out and our variable x is now isolated. So x equals and then on the right side of the equation, we have 28 plus nine. That gives us 37. So X equals 37. That's the solution of this equation. Now, one last thing we can do, we can always check to see if we are correct. All we need to do is plug in what we got and see if it works. So for example, plug in 37 for X. So let's go to the side plug in 37 for x, so 37 minus nine equals 28. 37 minus nine is 28, so we are correct. x equals 37. Let's move on to number two, where we have a plus 14 equals 33. So what plus 14 equals 33? So what's the inverse operation? What's the opposite of addition? Well, subtraction. So let's subtract 14 from the left side of the equation. Whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So let's subtract 14 from the right side as well. On the left side of the equation, we are adding 14 and subtracting 14. So these 14s cancel each other out. A, our variable, is now isolated. So a equals, and then on the right side of the equation, 33 minus 14 gives us 19. So a equals 19, and that's our solution. But let's check it by plugging 19 in for a and see if that works. So 19 plus 14 equals 33. 19 plus 14 is 33, so we are correct. A equals 19. Moving on to number three, we have 75 equals W plus 31. Now for number three, the variable is on the right side of the equation. So a little bit of a different look here, but we use the same exact process. So this doesn't change anything. So we have what plus 31 equals 75. We are adding 31 here. So the inverse operation, the opposite of addition is subtraction. So let's subtract 31 from the right side of the equation. Whatever we do to one side, 
we must do to the other. So subtract 31 from the left side as well. Now on the right side of the equation, we are adding 31 and subtracting 31. So these 31s cancel each other out. W is now isolated. So we have W equals, and then on the left side of the equation, 75 minus 31 equals 44. So W equals 44, that's our solution. Now let's check that by plugging 44 in for W. So 75 equals 44 plus 31. 44 plus 31 is 75, so we are correct. W equals 44. And then lastly, number four, we have 59 equals M minus six. So we are subtracting six from M here. We need the inverse operation, the opposite of subtraction. That's addition. So let's add six to the right side of the equation. Whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So add six to the left side as well. On the right side of the equation, we are subtracting six and adding six. So those sixes cancel each other out. M is now isolated. So we have M equals, and then on the left side of the equation, 59 plus six gives us 65. So M equals 65. That's our solution. Now let's check it by plugging 65 in for M. So we have 59 equals 65 minus six. 65 minus six is 59, so we are correct. M equals 65. So there's our addition and subtraction section. Let's move on to multiplication and division. Now let's take a look at our multiplication and division examples and jump into number one where we have y divided by six equals eight. Remember, when we have something in fractional form like that, we divide. Now we are dividing y by six. So we need to undo that division, so to speak, by using the inverse operation. What's the inverse or opposite of division? Well, multiplication. So let's multiply the left side of the equation by six. Whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other side of the equation in order to keep everything balanced and equivalent. So let's multiply the right side of the equation by six as well. Now on the left side of the equation, we are dividing by six and multiplying by six. So these sixes cancel each other out. Y, our variable, is now isolated. So Y equals, and then on the right side of the equation, we have eight times six, which is 48. So Y, equals 48, that's our solution. And one last thing we can do here, we can always check to see if we are correct. All we need to do is plug in what we got and see if it works. So for example, plug in 48 for y. So off to the side, let's plug in 48 for y. So 48 divided by six equals eight. 48 divided by six does equal eight, so we are correct y equals 48. Let's move on to number two, where we have 11x equals 77. And remember, when we have a number next to a variable, that's multiplication. So this is 11 times what equals 77. So we need the inverse operation, the opposite operation here. So what's the opposite of multiplication? Well, division. So let's divide the left side of the equation by 11. Whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So divide the right side of the equation by 11 as well. On the left side of the equation, we are multiplying by 11 and dividing by 11. So these 11s cancel each other out. X is now isolated. So X equals and then on the right side of the equation, we have 77 divided by 11. That gives us seven. So X equals seven. 
So that's our solution. Now let's check that by plugging seven in four X. So 11 times seven equals 77. 11 times seven is 77. So we are correct. X equals seven. Let's move on to number three, where we have 25 equals C divided by five. Now for numbers three and four, the variable is on the right side of the equation. So a little bit of a different look here, but we use the same exact process. So this doesn't change anything. So for number three, we have what divided by five equals 25. We are dividing C by five. What's the inverse operation, the opposite of division? Well, multiplication. So let's multiply the right side by five. Whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So multiply the left side by five as well. On the right side of the equation, we are dividing by five and multiplying by five. These fives cancel each other out. C is now isolated, so C equals, and then on the left side of the equation, five times 25 gives us 125. So C equals 125. That's our solution. Now let's check it by plugging 125 in for C. So 25 equals 125 divided by five. 125 divided by five is 25, so we are correct. C equals 125. Lastly, let's move on to number four, where we have 80 equals four W. So four times what equals 80? So what's the inverse operation here? What's the opposite of multiplication? Well, division. So let's divide the right side of the equation by four. Whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So divide the left side by four as well. On the right side of the equation, we are multiplying by four and dividing by four. So those fours cancel each other out. W is now isolated. So we have W equals, and then on the left side, we have 80 divided by four, which is 20. So W equals 20. That's our solution. Now let's check it by plugging 20 in for W. So 80 equals four times 20. Four times 20 is 80, so we are correct. W equals 20. So there are all of our example problems. Let's move on to some practice problems that you can try on your own. So have paper and a pencil ready. Here are your practice problems. I'll give you five minutes and then we will go over the answers. Feel free to press pause if you need more time or jump ahead to the answers whenever you are ready. Go ahead and start.
Okay, so that was five minutes. Let's go over the answers. Here are our answers. For number one, x equals three. For number two, y equals 74. For number three, m equals 18. For number four, a equals 56. For number five, y equals five. And then lastly, for number six, x equals 91. So there you have it. There's how to solve one-step equations. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.